God, that you alone are God and you're good. And so we say, we bless your name.
by his revealed name. He is the Lord. He is Yahweh. But you also call him Adonai. We call him Jehovah. And Jehovah comes with many other characteristics. He's Jehovah Elohim. He's Jehovah our, 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 our provider, Jireh. He's Shama. He's Nisi, our banner. And that's what we want to we call out his name this day. Amen? Amen. You're a good God. And this thing we hear because you exist. Nakupamba, Nasipazango, Wewe Kwangu, Ebeneza, Nakupamba, Nasipazango, Wewe Kwangu, Ebeneza, 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 
our speaker told us to have a Christ consciousness. That at all times, have Christ in your mind at the, at, 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 at the, first, at, at the first point. Not your troubles, not your worries, not the, the virus that is spreading around like wildfire, but have Christ consciousness with you at all times. So that anything that happens, you are secure on the solid rock that is Jesus Christ. Now, if you know the names of God, Jire is a provider. And whatever mountain you are on that he has called you to, he will provide. He is Shama, God with us. We know when God says he is with us, he does not mince his words. You may feel like you're, in, you're backed up in a corner, but in that corner, he is with you. He is Rafa, our healer. He is Nisi, our banner. When, when, when armies went to war, they had a banner for you to know which side your army had got, got, gotten to. If you had won, the, the banner was, was erected at the end of that field, on, on, on the opposing end. And God is that one who's our banner, showing us where to go, showing us that he has won this victory. And we are fighting, we are living, we are standing this day, not just by grace, but by the finished work on the cross of Calvary. So as we sing, have this in your mind that God is there for you. Nothing is happening just by chance. Nothing is happening by just by chance. All things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purposes. So let's rejoice in his because he's a worthy God. And he is worthy, he is able, he is mighty. He is all things that you ever need in this life. Oh, not quit time, not quit time. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget any of his benefits. Who forgives your sins, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you lovely, lavishly with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your years with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the soaring eagle. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known his ways of righteousness and justice to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in compassion and loving kindness. He will not always strive with us, 
nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins as we deserve, nor rewarded us with punishment according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his loving kindness towards those who fear him and worship him with all filled respect and deepest reverence. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. And just as a father loves his children, so the Lord loves those who fear and worship him with all filled respect and deepest reverence. For he knows our mortal frame. He remembers that we are merely dust. As for man, his days are like, are like grass, like a flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it, and it is no more, and its place knows, and its place knows it no longer. But the loving kindness of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who reverently fear him, and his righteousness to children's children, to those who honor and keep his covenant, and remember to do his commandments, imprinting his word on their hearts. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens, and his sovereignty rules over all the universe. Bless the Lord, you his angel, you mighty ones who do his commandments, obeying the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, who serve him and do his will. Bless the Lord, all you works of his, in all places of his dominion. Bless and affectionately praise the Lord, O oh my soul. And that's the word of the Lord. The Bible commands us to bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. I don't know how else to, 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 to break this down. Just bless the Lord. He's good and he's good all the time. I don't know what you may be feeling right now. You know, human beings are social beings. Yet when you come out here, you have to keep at a distance. At times you need that affectionate hug when you're alone. But there's no one around you at that point. The Lord is faithful. Still bless his name. Lift up your voice and exalt him at that point when you feel at your weakest. Because he promises that though we may walk through the valley of the shadow of death, it's a shadow of death, he is with us. And we're called upon to just love on him despite. Love on him in spite of. He's a good God. Bless his holy name, oh my soul. is holy. Yes, 
the Lord. Because His plan for you is for good and not for evil. For the future, for your blessing. And He loves you so much. justified in your presence. You've done great things, Lord. You have done great You've done great You have done great things. You have 
I will stand in your presence, Lord, in your temple, Lord, and worship you, Lord, all the days of my life. Hey, one last time, say, Thank you and we bless you. You're a good God. You're a faithful God. And we love you. What more can we say but thank you? Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for sustaining us, Lord. Thank you for fighting battles for us that we would not see, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for letting your fire still burn in this country. That there's a remnant in this country for you. People whose hearts are still blazing a light for you. Whose fire has not gone out. As you instructed us, Lord, that this fire should not burn out. But that we should be infilled with the Holy Spirit at all times. Continually, Lord. May this flame grow out, Lord, to the entire country. To the entire region of East Africa. To the entire co continent and beyond, Lord. That your name may be glorified. Because your children are here representing you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Another round of applause to our worship team.
Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for leading us so well in the presence of God. May God richly bless you. Let's appreciate them one more time as they take their seats. Good morning, Nairobi Chapel, Ongatarungai. Good morning. How are you all doing? Now that we are all wearing masks, I don't know whether you'll tell someone I remember your forehead from last Sunday. <laughs> so how, how do you remember someone? But uh, uh, just uh, turn to the person standing next to you and uh, just, oh, you can't smile, by the way. How do we do this wave, thing? Wave, just wave. Oh, you can just wave. wave. You can just, just wave. wave. Uh, even as we take smile our seats. Smile inside the mask. And you can, yes, you can <laughs> smile. You may have your seats. Karibuni sana. We are so glad that you're joining us here today. My name is Alex Balo, and we are, I'm hosting here with this amazing Mze. You know, for I get a chance to be young. I'm hosting with this old man. <laughs> He's my boss. Don't mistake your son. <laughs> I might lose my job. <laughs> but uh, we are glad that you're joining us, uh, Pastor Zach. How yes, are you? Um, my name is Pastor Zach. You know, I've always thought I'm this young man <laughs> until I was in me. this matatu, and then some young men were kasema, Wem zes, you song uko. And for me in my head, I you know, I still think I'm very young, but mm. uh, as Balo is saying, yeah, you know, age catches up with you and you're not young. <laughs> <laughs> you're not <laughs> let me just tell they didn't tell you the whole Anyway, <laughs> moving on swiftly. Um <laughs> how many of you are worshipping with us for the very first very time? First. Any visitor, just keep your hand raised up. Uh our ushers are going to give you a slip. Who's worshipping with us for the first time? Okay. Uh, we the have two on that side. Uh, uh, ashes are going to give you a slip. Just fill it with the information. Once we're giving offering, you can just drop it in the offering bag. And we can get to reach you and know you much better. Yes, and after the service, we'd like to have a conversation with you. we just like to meet briefly so that we can get to know more about you. Yes. Uh, yes. Sasa, we're glad. Thank you very much. Pastor Zach, yes. what has been your highlight for this week? Um, my highlight for this week, um, mm -hmm. first thing is that uh, I know God got me. God. Yeah, he's got me, you know. It's okay. Uh, but I can, it. I can translate it to normal English. Uh -huh. uh, God, uh, God has me. <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay. Now I understand. <laughs> God has you. <laughs> anyway, um, just the faithfulness of God. Um, I'm alive. You know, in this first week, uh, people have really lost their life, and people have really gotten sick. And uh, I want to thank God that I'm here today, and uh, I'm healthy, and my family is fine. Yes. It's mm. fine. Yes. Now I wish I could also say my family is fine, but my family is also fine. My mom, my siblings, you know, for you, you mean your wife, your children, yes. but they're still family. <laughs> I think... For me, I've had an amazing week uh, after the president's speech. I think it was last week, but one. Now the, the government was a bit more vigilant with the wearing of masks and everything. So you, maybe you're sitting in a matatu, you're like, police, police. Bio. So you sit and wonder, uh, is it for the police? Or is it because we are actually required to put on this face mask? I, I, I think Kenyans wear masks not to be caught by the police, That's not true. to get sick. And yeah. as a church, we want to continue insisting that um, when you come through our doors, mm -hmm. that you'll have your mask on because you don't know what... Uh, y you're protecting yourself uh, mm -hmm. against mm -hmm. this virus. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have a mask, please just lift up your hand and your our ashes. Oh. Everyone okay. has a mask. Everyone you're a clap for yourselves. We are a good church. <laughs> ah, very good. Very good. Very good. Yes. For those watching us online, if you're not home, please make sure you get a face mask. But we hope you're watching from home so you don't have to wear one. Yes, 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 because you're with family. Yeah. And also, uh, I think we forgot to welcome those of us who are watching us from home. Mm -hmm. Karibuni sana, even for those who are tuning in for the very first time. Yes. Um, just uh, send us a message on our office line, yeah, there is which is there. somewhere there. That's yeah. true. Mm. Sasa, amazing. Uh, we are going through a sermon series. This month we decided that it's a month of thanksgiving for those who've been with us. It's a month of it's a month of thanksgiving. And last last Sunday, Pastor Jane Shianda yes. really challenged us, uh, especially as believers. And she brought forth a very amazing sermon, just challenging us to give, mm -hmm. even as we get into the festive season already. Mm -hmm. December is here, it's a festive season. 
And the biggest takeaway for me was we have a lot. Even for those of us who think we don't have a lot, mm-hmm. you still have a lot to at least share with someone. Mm-hmm. And it was a big challenge for me as a young man, mm-hmm. thinking, ah, you know, I have to save before I start giving. I have to have a car like Pastor Zach. Then I can start giving. But she just challenged us, even with the little that I have, I can still give. I'm still in a position to help someone. Because it's someone who looks at me and thinks, wow, if only I could get there. What was your takeaway, Pastor Zach? Um, for me, it was the challenge. Yeah? Mm-hmm. You know, for a very long time, as Nairobi Chapel Longatwangai, we've been uh, doing something we call Christmas Mtani. And what we do is that we go to a children's home at a quarry. It's called Miale Atumaini. And what we usually do is go and um, uh, make lunch for, I think, how many kids are usually there? A hundred oh, and something. Uh, Six hundred. Six hundred. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yes. So every other holy Christmas holiday, as a church, we do that. And uh, because of the restrictions, we are not able to uh, go to that home. And we are challenge- challenging ourselves to uh, put a smile on someone's face. Eh? Mm-hmm. And Pastor Jane uh, put it very clearly that let's challenge ourselves to feed a thousand families this Christmas. So many a thousand, eh? <laughs> and <laughs> shopping is around 1,200. Roughly. Roughly. Uh, basically, you know, Christmas is not Christmas without chapat. Without chapat. And something else. And uh, for chapati to be chapati, you know, there has to be cooking oil mm-hmm. and uh, there has to be ndengu. So <laughs> basically, or, 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 or beans. beans, uh? beans. Or for beans. the young men, it's beans. Yes. So for for us to make this Christmas something good and nice, eh? mm-hmm. we are praying that you'll be able, don't just send us the money, mm-hmm. please go and shop. Yes, buy, because the budget is roughly 1,200. At least buy two packets of unga ya chapati. Buy um, ndengu, ndengu or, beans. or beans, cooking oil. Uh, and for the New Year's in the house, don't <coughs> forget, Christmas is not Christmas without Ugali. <laughs> so one packet of Unga ya Ugali. So that uh, then we bring them to church. And there are so many people who've been walking through our doors this holiday, as we've mentioned earlier, that during this whole season, we've been able to feed 250 families consistently. Mm-hmm. And thanks to you for your generosity, and we thank God and appreciate God for you. Maybe you can clap for Let's yourselves. Clap. That was amazing. You know, yes. getting to feed not just 250 people, it's 250 families. That has really helped, and I think we've been home long enough. Pastor Zach is even saying, through this holiday. It was not a holiday. <laughs> 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 but I'm saying, through this holiday, we've been never <laughs> like, eh? when was the holiday? Yeah, through this pandemic. Yeah, getting yes. getting yeah. to feed 250 families is, mm-hmm. is not a joke. And now we have a chance. We are challenging ourselves as a congregation, not as Nairobi Chapel staff or anything, as the congregation to feed a thousand families. Yes. It is even a greater impact when you actually buy the pack yourself mm-hmm. and bring it. Mm-hmm. Whether you get to meet the person who's going to receive it or not, you feel much better. You're like, we are feeding someone. Even walking out there, we're like, as Nairobi Chapel Rongai, we are getting to feed a thousand families. And you're not restricted. Whoever who is here, Pastor Zach can only afford one. On my other hand, I can afford to buy three. Yes. I will just buy three packets and mm. bring to <laughs> help a family. And yes. not just bring two. You can bring two as well. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. So <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll try and bring two. Yes. Yeah. Mm. We continue the sermon series. Pastor Lillian is going to preach today. And uh, she's going to share something on service. Getting to serve. And here at Nairobi Chapel, Rongai, we have various, various ministries that you have an opportunity to get to serve. Pastor Zach, what are some of the ministries that stand out for you? Um, just before we go into that part of uh, just yeah. sharing the amazing Ministry. opportunities uh-huh. that are available in at NCR, mm-hmm. is that uh, during this pandemic, not a holiday, yes, I've pandemic. realized there's need for people to really know God, to be anchored in the word of God. Because uh, this thing has really exposed how we relate with God, and we can see that there are so many people who have given up or uh, are even thinking God doesn't exist because of the prevailing circumstances. And uh, even as a church, um, 
the Bible says in Matthew chapter 9, verse 35, I'll read um, uh, verse 37. Uh, then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers in his harvest. And there are many opportunities in Rongai to minister and to witness to people. And that's why this today we are opening up our doors and the opportunities that are available for service at NCOR. And uh, there are so many ways that you can serve God uh, at NCOR. And uh, one of, of the ministries that uh, is close to my heart is marriage ministry. Don't look at me. <laughs> I feel it's like one of the ministries is marriage <laughs> ministries. <laughs> yes? um, anyway, uh, <laughs> but I know there is hope for you, young man. As uh, you continue. Very, very soon. <laughs> Amen. And um, even through this pandemic, we've seen how uh, they say uh, domestic violence has really gone up. And it's because of just people didn't get it right from the beginning. And as a church, we are giving uh, couples and even people who want to get married an opportunity to uh, just be anchored in the word of God. Mm -hmm. So if you feel you are called into marriage ministry and you want to uh, serve, serve in that area, uh, I want to believe our office line should be up on the screen. It, sh it should be up, but I'll be giving you the number yeah. uh, in a few minutes. So if you're called to marriage ministry, there's an opportunity, to for, opportunity for you to serve. Wow, yes. amazing. Mm. Yeah, it's nice hearing a ministry close to his heart. Uh, one other amazing ministry is the services ministry. And again, through this whole pandemic, not holiday, uh, we were home. No one thought we could close church. But in one way or the other, we still got to experience church. And that's the services ministry. Guys, we had to come up with ways in which we can get to minister to the online platforms that we have, Facebook, YouTube, whatever it is. And now the even opportunities are more for those who maybe you do IT as a career. Imagine how amazing it would be to now offer your skills to us as the church. Because we are here, we are enjoying service. Guys at home are still getting to enjoy service together. You might be a photographer, you might be a videographer, you might be someone who thinks ah, that deco looks a bit old. Yes, it's Pastor Zach who gives the deco, but now imagine you bringing your skill now <laughs> and saying, we want young and vibrant deco for us. Yes. So you can get to plug in into the services ministry as well. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, just to continue uh, what he's saying is that we need creatives. We even need people to MC. Yeah. And uh, to be part of the services, to make services uh, what it is. If you feel like uh, maybe they should have added something here and, you know, we yeah. need those skills. We really need we those really skills. We really need those yeah. skills. And also another ministry is our quest, which is uh, our children's, children's ministry. ministry. Yeah. So if you feel <laughs> like you're called to minister to children, there's an opportunity for you here in this church. And uh, we are kindly asking that... Uh, you will send your details to our office line also, which we'll be giving uh, okay. in a few. We have the 3D, 3D, which is the teens and youth ministry. Mm -hmm. Actually, we are, our teens service is going on at the moment, the quest not yet, where you can get to engage, get to go to camps with these young ones, get to have sessions with them. If you feel like you're a counselor or would like to just offer your time, your skills, the young people, the young men, young ladies, who are like, I would like to learn a skill, I'd like to learn. It's not a matter that you stand in front and give a class or a sermon. The skills that you have, the young men are interested in them. Not just uh, books, they learn that in school. But if you feel like your calling is in the teens ministry, then you're also welcome to plug in and get to serve with them. Yes, and uh, also we still have other ministries like uh, our men's ministry, the Nazarites. Nazarite, yeah. uh, if you feel like you're called to uh, disciple men also, there's an opportunity for you. Yes, there's another ministry. I don't know what to say about it. The women's ministry. Yeah, Waridi. It's called Waridi. Mm. That's all I know. But it's an amazing ministry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if I give more details, you start looking at me like, eh. But uh, it's uh, the women's ministry is called Waridi, yeah. where the ladies, it's not a must that you're married or not. You're a lady. Yes. You can plug in and get to serve together with them. 
Yes, and talk of plugin. Plugin is our discipleship uh, uh, ministry, uh, which seeks to connect you to God, to your church, church and yeah. even to your destiny. destiny. And basically, that's the our discipleship ministry. So anyone who wants to serve has to go through a plugin ministry, and it's a ten weeks experience, and you don't want to miss that. It really redefines uh, your belief. Uh, you know that things that you've been taught out there, there are lies that you've always believed. believed. And plugin sort of just realigns all these things to God's purpose. Amen. Amen. Yes. I feel like we've preempted the sermon, so. Let's yeah. just give it up for Pastor Lillian, who is going to be sharing yes. God's word today. Mm -hmm. Karibu sana, Pastor Lillian. Karibu sana. Uh, let's pray. Uh, Father, we thank you for Pastor Lillian. We thank you for her life even as she gets to share your word. May it be a blessing. May you speak through her and through her. For this I pray in Jesus' name. Thank you so much, Pastor Zach and Barlow. Good morning. Good morning. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Are you excited to be here? I am absolutely excited, delighted to be here. I am honored and privileged to be bringing God's word today. And uh, I can see you, you know, with the masks, I can't see the smile. But I have faith that you're happy. <laughs> yeah, I have faith that you're uh, rejoicing in the inside. Cindy, oh? Yes, as Pastor Zach has said together with Balo, uh, we've had two weeks that Pastor Jane has been able to take us through the conversations and we have been challenged. If you are here, you've been challenged. The highlight for me was the other Sunday when she was talking about how we love to hoard things. And the way we keep things to ourselves, even things that we do not need. And I have practically had to go in my house and tell myself, okay, now I need to take stock. What is it that I have? That is good, but I don't necessarily need it. And there's someone out there who genuinely really needs it. And it's been a good process to even ask my son, you know, what is it that you have? It's good and you like, not that it's started or anything, but we don't need that you can be able to bless someone else. So it's been a really, really good conversation. As they have also mentioned, this is our Thanksgiving. It's our Thanksgiving month. And I don't know what it is that you're thanking God for. I know sometimes when things are hard, it's really not easy to find reasons to be grateful for. This past week, uh, my mom was unwell. Like, she was the kind of unwell that I have never seen her unwell. Like, we had to rush her to hospital midnight. I had to spend the whole night in hospital. I've never done that. So, for, that, for me, that was staggering a bit. And we had to spend another day seeing some specialist doctors. And I remember when she was going, she was looking a little low. But we got there, and we found, you know the way when you go to hospitals, you find queues. And we found a really long queue. But what, as we, uh, as we were queuing seated, we observed is that there were some people who were really sick. You know, both of us weren't really talking. But I remember she pulled me and told me, and she'd show me. She was like, see that man. He is really sick. See the other. And from her lips, she told me, L being here has reminded me why I need to thank God. Seeing everyone else has reminded me that I, you, I could have been worse were it not for God. And for me, who I'm not the one who was sick, it was like a light bulb moment to actually be still and tell God, thank you even now. Even now when it looks like it's difficult, there's every reason to thank you because my mom is still alive. Because she is still able to talk. She's still able to walk. There are those who are at a much worse state. What am I trying to tell us? That in our circumstances, in our situations, however they look, if you sit still and look around you, you have more than enough reason to still tell God thank you. So, so, so as we go throughout this week, look for opportunities to thank God. Make this intentional in your life that indeed this month that you will find every reason. That when you wake up, you'll find a reason to thank God. That as you walk, you'll find a reason to thank God. And that as you walk, you know, as you do everything, that you will find opportunities to tell God thank you for the things he has done. Praise the Lord again. That was bonus for the sermon. It wasn't part of the sermon. <laughs> but I felt like to say so because it's really been in my heart this week. Today, as Pastor Zach and Balo have said, we're going to talk about service. 
But before we get there, I want to talk about something that stood out for me this week. And I thought it's a good place for us to start as we get into this conversation about service. Every Tuesday, as, as a staff team, we meet to plan, deliberate, and just have conversations about how the church is doing, what are the things we need to do. But my favorite part of our meeting is whenever we meet, before we get into any other business, we take time to study the word of God together. So every season, we choose a book. You know, we go through maybe John, and this season we're going through Luke. And this past week, we were doing Luke 13. It's definitely my favorite time because we get to read through the whole chapter together, process it together, ask each other questions, be able to challenge each other's thinking and understanding of God's word at that time. And as we were going through Luke 13, the topic of, you know, that chapter is written, repent or perish. Okay, like th that's like the, if you look at your Bible, if it has titles, that is the title of Luke 13. And we talked about how in this day and age, unlike when we were growing up, you rarely hear someone's being preached about heaven and hell. How many of you agree that when we were growing up, heaven and hell conversations were had in churches so many times? Spirit of hand. Yes, that you would pass by. I remember even going through Quarry Market and I'd hear crusades. And you know, there'll be passionate pastors talking about that if you do not give your life to Christ, you're going to go to hell. And some gave their life to Christ, not because they loved him, but because they were so afraid of this hell. But it was being talked about more than any other time. And as we, you know, we, we deliberated about it, we processed it. And after that, I've just had time to really think about it. And I know so many of my friends or so many people that I've met that when asked, they say they are born again. Sindio, a lot of people, even in introduction, you say, you know, my name is Wahu Anjiku, I am born again, and they continue, yara, 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 yara. But when you interrogate some and ask them, what does it really mean to say you're born again? What is salvation? A lot of people don't quite understand what salvation is. And I feel like in church, sometimes we take it for granted that because people come to church, they know what salvation is. And I want to begin our conversation today by answering that simple question. What is it to say that we are born again? What is the salvation to us? When we say that we are born again, what do we really mean? And I'm going to ask Faith to come so that she can help me read. Faith, thank you so much. Uh, we're going to read the book of Ephesians. If you have your Bible, you can turn there. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 9. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 9. For those who have your phones, you can turn them on, tablet. Yes, let's get to Ephesians 2, 8 to 9. Repeat again, faith, just so we emphasize. So, it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not for you, from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Thank you so much, faith. That it is by faith that we have been saved. That there is nothing, that it's a gift. That there is nothing you and I can do that can earn us salvation. There is no praying that you and I can do that can earn us salvation. Not fasting, nothing that you and I can do completely that can earn us salvation. Not service, you know, that as we are calling you to service, it's not like how much time you usher or how much time you, you, you spend, you know, carrying the wires that you earn salvation. Salvation, according to this verse that you've read, is a, is a, it is a gift, isn't it? A gift given to us. Do you pay for a gift? No. You, a gift is presented to you. Isn't it? That a gift is someone else who goes and pays for it. And then they give it to you. The gift of salvation is not a free gift. Because Jesus Christ had to pay a hefty price for it. He went to the cross and died to be able to get us this gift. He paid at Calvary so that you and I can receive this gift for free. 
for those who, this is your first time maybe coming to church after many years or you've never even interacted with scriptures. And you could be saying, okay, I do not understand. Let me tell you a little story that long, long time ago, before you and I, God decided to make a man in his own image. And he made a man called Adam. And then he looked at him and he was like, hmm, it is not good for this man to be alone. So out of his rib, he got a woman called Eve. And then this woman, you know, they were in this garden that God has given, had given them. And they had this tree of good and evil that God had told them, you can eat everything. You can have dominion over everything. But this one fruit, do not eat. And then this woman once, I think she was just going through the garden. And then she met this serpent. And they had a conversation. And the woman ended up eating the fruit. And then she took it to the husband. The husband who was? And it looks like anything a man is given by the husband, they just eat. So Adam ate there. And that is how sin came into earth. All right? And since then, because that was not the plan of God, immediately God started a plan on how to ensure that he redeems us man back to himself. He started a journey of redemption right there. You know, he wanted them to go back to the state where they could commune together. And in the Old Testament, we see that when they sinned, they would sacrifice a lamb. They would use animals to purge their sins, isn't it? But we go to the Old New Testament where God sends his own begotten son, the ultimate sacrifice, so that he may die and becomes the sacrifice that now pays for our sin. And you and I get to enjoy the gift that Christ got for us. That he went there and died on our behalf so that you and I may what? May receive this gift of salvation. So it is not a free gift. It is a, plan, a huge plan that God had to come up with to ensure that you and I get it. And then he gives it to us for free. Now, it is up to you and I to decide if we are going to receive this gift or not. Once we acknowledge and confess and receive this gift, then we, are, we, we confidently say we are saved. To copper water up to there, we can confidently say we are saved. It is not because we've earned it. It's not because we've done anything. Before we made the decision to actually accept the gift, he had already paid for it. Before we, we, we said yes to him, he had already gone ahead and paid the price. I was thinking about it. I love gifts. And imagine you have a friend and they have really, been, really been struggling maybe to get, say, a fridge in their house, okay? They, they don't have a fridge in their house. Each time you meet them, they, you know, they talk about how they wish they had a fridge in their house because it would make their life so much easier. They would be able to meal prep in advance. They would be able to plan their life a lot more and get more time to do things because this fridge would help them preserve their food. You know, they keep, you know they need it. When you look at them, you feel like if this friend of mine can be able to get a fridge, their life could become so much more. And so you decide, because you love your friend and because you care for them deeply, you're going to say kafu or naivas and purchase for them a fridge. And you look for the best kind, you know, big size, the best one that fits them. And you get it and you purchase it and you come and tell them, I have given you this as a gift. Okay? You're giving them this gift because you know for sure they truly need it. Isn't it? And your friend is like, they are very excited. They actually are like, oh my God, I really needed this. And so they receive the gift. They are grateful, they receive the gift. But once they receive this gift, they take it in their house and they put it in their kitchen. They put it in a nice corner. And, and, and you know, they, 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 took, they, they take their food and they pack it inside and they put it there. But they do not plug it to power. You see, the purpose of the fridge is to be able to preserve food. So, no, regardless of how new and beautiful and regardless of the fact that you could have received it, if you don't plug it to power, the fridge becomes useless even if it's in your house. Agree with me? And I feel like so many of us are like that. That we needed this gift so much. And this gift was paid for us. And we actually went ahead and received the gift. But once we receive this gift of salvation, 
we went and looked for a nice corner. You know, where when everyone enters our house, we can see that they have a fridge. You know, we can see the, the salvation. We are born again. However, we have not plugged into power. That means we, we have not connected. Meaning that although the gift is there, it is not fulfilling its purpose. Are we together? It is not fulfilling that which it was made to do. It's not serving you in the way that it, it was supposed to serve you. As I was telling you when we were going through the book of Luke, chapter 13, some verses there talk about this master who finds this guy, and he, there's this tree, and he looks at the tree. And uh, he's like, this tree has been here for a long time, but it does not bear fruit. And he says, I think it should be cut, because the function of this tree, why it was planted, it was so that it can be able to bear fruit. But it is not bearing fruit. And we see this guy pleading, and he tells him, Sir, if you could give me one more year, you know, I will prune, I will dig around this tree, I will fertilize it, I will give it water. But if after one year it does not still bear fruit, then we can cut it off. Okay? It's like he's, he's, he's having this bargain. And I thought about it when you think about John 15. We all know John 15. A lot of us know John 15. I want us to read it. So I'm going to ask again Faith to help me read it. But John 15 talks about Jesus being the vine and we being the branches. That story in John, Luke 13 really took me there. That if we are connected to the vine, which is Jesus Christ, and we are not bearing fruit, then he says by himself. I mean, this is from Jesus' own, own word. So, faith, read for us. So that they hear it right from the scripture. John 15, verse 1 to 8 says, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does not bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the words I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like, a branch that is thrown away and withers. Some, such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Thank you so much, Faith. That if we remain in him, that is the only way we can bear fruit. Or else, we are like branches that are cut off. Isn't it? That it is possible that we receive this gift. But if we do not bear fruit, we are like branches that were cut off to this vine. Because naturally, if we are connected to this vine, it is expected that we will bear fruit. It is expected that we will begin to bear. It's, it, it is a natural process that you will bear fruit. And I want to give you a minute to just think about it and process. When you look at your life, although you say you received this gift of salvation, do you feel like you have been connected, you have remained connected enough to this vine? Are, are the fruits in your life showing that indeed you are connected to this vine? If we came and looked around, can we see the evidence, you know, that indeed this tree is bearing fruit? It is fulfilling its purpose. Or are you at the place where the master would be saying, this tree needs to be cut off? I'm going to actually give you a minute to, to think about it. And we will continue. As believers, once we acknowledge Jesus, 
and we receive him as our personal savior, then he becomes our ultimate example. Then what we are acknowledging to have done is, according to Ephesians 2, 6, it says that I no longer live now, but Christ lives in me. What we are saying is that Wahu and Chiko stopped living the day she received Jesus Christ. Meaning that now the desires of my heart should be the desires of Jesus Christ. That now the things that I prioritize in my day to day are not the things Wahu would have prioritized, but the things Jesus Christ would have prioritized. That I died. And that it, because I died, now it is Jesus who lives in me. And truly, if Jesus is living in me, then we should be able to see that Jesus. Because if Jesus is our ultimate example, and we go back to scriptures and just look at Jesus' journey, you know, we see that he bared fruit. When I was thinking about Jesus' life and processing, how that looked like. Because Jesus is our ultimate example. So if you are not following him, then we cannot say we are his disciples. And one of the things that is so, out, it's so evident in Jesus' life, one of the things that he used to do constantly is that he would take time to spend with his father. Isn't it? That we see in scriptures in different stories where he would leave the disciples. He would like retreat from everyone else with the sole purpose of spending time with his father. This was his way of ensuring that he is connected. Constantly ensuring that he's connected to the, to, to the power. You remember a fridge cannot work regardless of how good it looks until it is connected to power. That he took time to be with his father. To, he took time to actually even fast and pray. When we were young and we would go to Sunday school, there's this song I'm sure you all know, so we're going to sing it together. And it says, read your Bible, pray every day. Every day. Pray every day. Read your Bible. What do you do? Read your Bible. Exactly. It is a simple song that we sang in Sunday school, but it has such fundamental truth. That if we do not spend time with the Father, just because we receive this gift of salvation, is not enough. We have to constantly connect with the Father. And how do we connect with the Father? We read our Bibles, because the Bible is the love letter of God to us. It's how we get to know him. It's by spending time in his word, you get to know his character. You get to know his promises over your life. You get to understand his, his language. You get to understand what he says about you. Otherwise, if it is closed, you even lose your own identity. So the only way you will remain connected to this vine is if you do this simple thing, says, read your Bible, pray every day. And when you look at your, 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 your daily plan, you know, like for this week, we are getting into Monday. When you evaluate your plan, have you intentionally set aside time to actually read your Bible and pray every day? Because that should be a reflection of the kind of follower or disciple that you are. Because if you, in your, in your time, if in your schedule, there is no time to spend with your father. If in your schedule there is no time to read your Bible, there is no time to pray, that really, really, it shows your priorities. It shows whose priorities are bigger in your life. Okay? So if we want to really function fully, if we want to really function properly, because the day we receive the gift of salvation, our purpose on earth changed. We all know that it is expected of us to fulfill the Great Commission. It, for every believer, once you're a believer, it's not for pastors only or people who are in church, that every one of us who become a disciple of Jesus Christ, one of our primary mandate is to go out there and make disciples of Jesus Christ wherever we are, okay? If that does not feature anywhere in your daily life, then you and God need to have a conversation. You and God need to, need to talk. You need to go and reevaluate that relationship. That for us to remain connected to the vine. For us to ensure we are not the fridge that has food and is rotting inside because it's not connected to the power. Then we need to constantly connect to the word of God. 
We need to constantly. And how I've realized that it doesn't happen naturally sometimes. I mean, we have all these things calling for attentions in our everyday life. Like there are days I've realized that day has gone. And I honestly haven't found time to really process with God and sit down with him. Or I do those rushed prayers. But I realized if I pre-plan, like if I am deliberate about it and say, I am a night person, so I function better at night. And I tell myself, between 9 and 10, I will not talk to my friends. I will not watch anything. I will, I will, it is my time. Regardless of what is going on or what is going to happen, I have set aside this time, this one hour. And if you're like me, you like it structured. Like I have put the first 15 minutes, you know, I give thanks. The next 15 minutes, I bring my petition. As in I have allowed that I know what I'm doing. That way, even when I'm not in the mood to do it, I do it out of discipline. And you know, even when you do it out of discipline, when you start to do it, you actually enjoy it. You know, God is always, you always know that I have a date with God at this time. And I'm challenging you as you go into this week, that as you're planning your life, that honestly will sit down and say, God, I'm going to give you one hour. I'm going to give you 30 minutes. And then be consistent with those 30 minutes. Because that's the only way that you will be plugged to power. And when you're plugged to power, I mean, as the, ma the more you're spending time in God's word, the more he's renewing your mind. The more he's directing you to the things that his heart beats for. The more you are aligned to in his will. The more you know, you understand his purposes, his specific purpose over your life. I'm not going to read it, but I'm going to ask you to read it later. Um, I'm looking for it. But I want us to, to read Luke later, later, when you have time. You're going to read Luke 14, uh, 25 to 33. And this is what it says, paraphrased. Jesus, tells, Jesus is, has this crowd following him. Like he has a lot of people who are following him. And then he looks back and he tells them, if you want to be my disciple. And I, for me, I picked that up because I realized there's a, di there's a difference between a disciple and a follower. Okay? You know those who are following and they're in a crowd? There are many people who follow someone. But followers who are in a crowd and have no allegiance to the person. When you're in a crowd because there's no responsibility or, ac or accountability, you can leave and come in whenever you want. Sendio, when you're in a crowd, we don't even know if you're there or you're not. But Jesus looks at them and says, if you want to be my disciples, and he gives conditions, that if you want to be my disciple, you must. There's several must do's in that scripture. And I don't know if you want to remain being a follower of Jesus Christ or you really want to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. Because if you want to be a disciple, as you continue Luke 14, uh, going down, he says, you must be willing to pay the price. Actually, he says, do not begin the journey until you have counted the cost. He even discourages them. He's like, don't begin the journey. Don't become my disciple if you haven't really counted the cost. And he gives an example of a builder who wants to build a house. And he says, you know, if you have not counted the cost in advance, then you're going to, at some point, get stuck and everyone in the neighborhood or the society will laugh at you. What he's really trying to say, do not even begin this journey if you have not counted the cost. Because he says, it is going to cost you to be my disciple. It is going to cost you and I to be disciples of Jesus Christ. I love, love, love that the symbol of our faith is not a crown. I don't know how we confuse it by thinking that just because we've given our life to Christ, it means we are going to be, you know, living this flamboyant. You know, we expect it to be easy. But the symbol of our salvation, the symbol of our faith is not a crown. It's actually a cross. It's a cross. It means it's sacrifice. It means there is a cost being paid. And the scripture says you... That same scripture says you must carry your cross. And this morning I'm challenging you to really count your cost. To count your cost. And look at your journey with God and say, if I'm committing to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, what is the cost for me? What will it cost me to, you know? It will cost you time. It will cost you your friends sometimes. It will cost you significant relationships. It will cost you some things you consider to be pleasure in your life. 
it will cost you. But if we want to be his disciple, we must be willing to count the cost and praise. So we've said number one, for us to continue being connected to the vine so that we may bear fruit. We must read our Bible and pray. Pray. That is an example given to us by our ultimate example, Jesus Christ. Another thing that I, you notice in Jesus' life is that even though his ultimate mission on earth was to come and die for you and I, that before that time came, he spent his time serving. He spent his time serving. We see him in dozens of stories if you go through the gospels where he would heal the sick, you know. He would resurrect the dead. He spent hours and hours teaching. He spent his time serving. So if he is our example, our ultimate example, you know, then it means as a disciple of Jesus Christ, then service should be part of who we are. Service should be part of who we are. And I know so many people who have been saved for years, but it's like they received salvation for themselves. You, you know you got saved and you're going to heaven. And that is it for you. It's like you have forgotten that your, the function or the reason as to why you are saved. That before we go to our Father in heaven, that we have a mission here on earth. And that you specifically have a specific assignment for you to do. And it is expected that you should be doing it. So if we want to be disciples who are bearing fruit, that as we continue to connect with the Father through prayer and through reading, then we will take the next step and serve. And I know there are those of you who are looking at me and are saying, okay, I, I, I get that I, I know how I can read the Bible, I can pray, but I don't know what to, how to serve. You know, when I look at the church, you know, ministries that maybe Pastor Zach and Barlow has said, when I look at them, I don't see anywhere I fit. Or I don't know how to identify the places that I can serve. I don't know exactly what I need to do. And I have this acronym that I hope will help you identify the spaces that you can serve. Are we together? If you're writing down in your phone, your book, or whatever, I want you to write down shape. Shape, S-H-A-P. This is to help you identify where you should be serving. We will begin with the word S. And S stands for spiritual gifts. S is for? Yeah, I like Nini for class. S is for? Spiritual gifts. Each one of us, when you receive Jesus in your heart, or when you receive this gift of salvation, you have inside of you been given the gifts, the spiritual gifts. And these gifts are supposed to help edify the kingdom of God. Okay? And each one of us, we have different gifts. What Pastor Zach has, may, maybe it's not what Emmanuel Q has. You know? What Mother has is not what Faith has. Different one of us have been given different gifts. And in the interest of time, I will give you the scriptures so that you go read them by yourselves. Scriptures that outline the different gifts. Okay? The different spiritual gifts. So I want you to write down 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8 to 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8 to 10. And then there is Romans 12, verse 6 to 8. Romans 12, 6 to 8. And then there's 1 Peter 4, 11. 1 Peter 4, 11. These scriptures will help you better understand what spiritual gifts are. You see how when you connect and read God's word, you get knowledge. You know, you are more informed. Go read them and then you will see where you fall. And then we have the letter H. H is for heart. Okay? What does your heart beat for? What is that thing that you find 
you, your heart really is inclined to it. What is your passion? As an individual, when you, when you think about it, what is really your passion? Because that's where your heart is. Where your passion is. That's where your heart is. What is your passion? Where, what, what, that, what makes your heart beat? Something that you, you, when you, you hear it or when you think about it, there is an excitement that arises in you. What is that thing for you? And then there is A, and A is for abilities. A is for abilities. Abilities are things you're skilled at. Things you, 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 you know, you have the skills for it. You either went to school for or learned about it, but you have the skill for You are skilled at that thing. Those are your abilities. I want you to think through what are your abilities. So we've talked about spiritual gifts. We've talked about our passions, our heart. And then now we are at our abilities, isn't it? And then P is for personality. P is for? P is for personality. Personality is, is who you are. You find, for example, I am more expressive. I'm an extrovert. I enjoy talking. I enjoy conversations. I am having a ball right now. I could do this all day because it is aligned to my personality. I enjoy it. I love it. I, 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 mean, I don't even apologize. I like it. Yeah, I like it. Anyway, I, it is personality. But you would find someone else who does not enjoy conversations. They would rather be behind a computer somewhere. They would rather be doing something else. Okay? So that personality is not in you by accident. God created you. He designed you like that for a reason and a purpose. He knows for you to fully accomplish that which he has called you to, he needs you to have the personality that you have. He needs you to be that loud or he needs you to be that calm. Are we together? So personality. What is your personality? And then the E, the last word, the E is for experience. There are things that you have gone through. There are things that you've experienced in your life. Others haven't. Experience is something that happened to you that left an impression on you. That left an impression that has not left on you. What is that experience that left an impression in your life? For different one of us, we have different expressions. And I'll give an example of myself. Uh, for those who know, I was a teen, teen mom. I got my son when I was 16. And because of that experience, it has aligned my passion for girls now. I feel more and I'm more passionate about mentoring and empowering girls, women, because of my experience at that time. That experience has formed and shaped and has aligned to my purpose, what has become my purpose. Are we together? So even your experiences, you know, even those, God wants to use them to be able to fulfill his purposes in your life. So look through. It could be an experience that you never even told someone. It left an impression of, on you, but you've never thought of it as something that God could use in his kingdom. But even that is a tool and a weapon that God can use. Your experiences intertwined with your personality, with your abilities and skills, with your spiritual gift together. Then they inform you on the spaces that God would like for you to step in. Are we together so far? If I was to do an exam, <laughs> we are together, yes? So S for? Mm -hmm. H. A. P. And E. Experience. So spiritual gifts, our hearts, our abilities, and then our personality and our experience. Together. Now, if you put those together, once you go home and you intentionally sit down and you put down, you know, read through the scriptures we talked about and you understand your spiritual gifts and then you do the H and look at the things that your heart beat for and then you, you know, your abilities put together, your personality, then you can confidently be able to see what are the spaces that you can serve. Okay? We said if we have, we, we will fulfill the purposes of God in our lives, we must be plugged into power. Okay? We must constantly be plugged in. So we must spend time with God through prayer. We must spend time with God through reading his word. But we must actively engage in service. And when you look at these things that we've learned right now, 
there is no one amongst us who has an excuse as to why they should be stopped. Because each one of us, God has given us a spiritual gift. Each one of us, our hearts beat for something. Each one of us, we have abilities and skills. And each one of us, we have personalities and experiences. So there is no excuse for anybody to say that me, I can't serve. Are we together? There is no way you can say that when I look at the kingdom of God, I don't see where exactly I can serve. It's not possible. Here at Nairobi Chapel, Ngatarungai, we have something we call the tea track. If you've gone through Plug In, Plug In is a 10-week discipleship program that Pastor Zach was talking about. That you're able to sit with other, you know, others in a small group of 10 or less. And you're able to go through the uh, conversations of our faith, foundations of faith, what is baptism, what is spiritual gift. You're able to go do that. But once you're done with Plug In, we talk to you about the tea track the church T track means transformational track. Our prayer and desire is once you walk into these doors, that we have a plan for you on how you grow. Okay? And at the very end of the T track, they have arrows, if you see, that talks about frontline ministries. And you know, we talk about frontline ministries being people who are impacting the six sectors of society. It could be that what you do is not necessarily required in this kind of church setup, like in this service. However, God has p placed you uh, maybe in arts and science or in education and right there in those six sectors of society, right there you can be able to serve God. Are we together? So you're not confined to being an usher, although we would love to see you smile at us. You're not confined to singing here in this stage. There is so many other ways you can serve. I think about two years ago is when we had the Eden's ministry that was born here at Nairobi Chapel Rongai. That is our environmental ministry. And it's because these guys felt like the only thing our hearts beat for is for the environment. We feel bad when we, feel, we see that the environment is not being conserved. They felt they had a passion for it. And they felt that their abilities and their skills aligned to that thing. And they began it. And they have been doing stuff to be able to uh, influence the environment. So it could be different things that each one of us are called to. But all of us have a responsibility if we are disciples of Jesus Christ. The expectation is that your priorities are aligned to his. So tomorrow as you go to work, to work as you're doing all these things, I need you to remember that your number one priority is being a disciple of Jesus Christ and fulfilling his purposes in your life. That all these things are just FYI. You know, they're just, by the way, the primary role as a disciple of Jesus Christ is to ensure that we are fulfilling his purpose in our life. And that is aligned to the Great Commission. That we are out there, we are making disciples of all men. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. If you can't literally baptize them, you bring them to church, and Pastor Zach will baptize them. To Kopamoja? And I know there is a group, other group of people who are saying, I hear you, Pastor. I kind of understand what you're saying. But I have not even gotten to that place of, of, of receiving this gift of salvation. I have not yet even received him. I have not yet acknowledged him as Lord and Savior over my life. And I want to remind you this morning and tell you there is no better gift that you'll ever receive on earth. No better gift than this. That he came and died for you and I. It is the greatest expression of, of love ever. That he died so that you could not die. And as I said before, there is nothing you can do to earn it. He has given us this gift for free. And constantly every day, he's at the door of your heart and he's knocking. You know, he's knocking with this gift packaged, just ready for you. If only you could open up your heart and receive it. With our heads bowed, I'd like to pose an invitation for you out there. If you feel like you're that person who you have heard of this God, but you have never really acknowledged him in your life. I want to remind you that he loves you and that he has a great plan for your life. And Jeremiah 29, 11 says that the plan is to prosper you. The plan is to give you a hope and a future. The plan is to give you life if only you would accept him. So just raise up your hand. I'm going to see it. 
You don't have to keep it raised. Just raise it, see it, and let today be the day that you make the greatest decision of your life. Are you there and you're saying, I would love this gift. I would love to accept this gift. Raise your hand. I'm going to say it, and then we will pray. Church, help, help us make this prayer together. Lord Jesus, I come to you acknowledging that you're Lord over my life. Accepting this gift of salvation. This gift that you have freely given us. I invite you into my heart to be Lord over my life. To be Lord over my life. From this day forward, I want to be your disciple. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And for the rest of us, Pastor Zach gave us an option of the different places we want to, we will serve. So if you had not really thought about it properly when they were talking, I really do pray that you will consider it seriously. Because it is not uh, an option it's not something you do because, you know, you can do or you cannot do. It is actually a requirement. It is a must. It is something that we must do. All right? So, as you go throughout the week, uh, you know, our office number, I don't know if they gave it to us, but our office line is 0716 0716. I can see a few people writing. 0716 you text us during the week. And you don't have to have figured it out. If you go and you're processing it at home and you're saying, I am not even sure where exactly. Just text that number and a pastor is going to call you and they are going to process it with you until you see what's the best fit for you. Is that okay? That none of us will remain stuck. I'm hoping that next year, as we go into 2021, that none of us will be a bench warmer anymore. That we will refuse. That we will refuse to be people... Christians who just received the gift and packed it. We, will receive, we refuse to be Christians who plug our fridge to power only during weekends. That when we come to church on Sunday is when you pray and you listen to God's word and then on Monday you unplug it and you move on. Because definitely if you do that, as you've said, then you will not be living fully. You will not be living out your purpose here on earth. To Kopamaja, thank you so, so much for listening. I pray that God continues to minister to you even as you go into the week. God bless you.
508 sorry what 
Let's appreciate him one more time. Uh, we've come to the end of our service this morning, and I uh, want to thank you for joining us and fellowshipping with us. Thank you, Pastor Wang, for sharing the word of God powerfully, and I pray that uh, we've been challenged and uh, that uh, we seek to work out our own salvation and then uh, even serve God. Uh, for our first time visitors, we'd like to get to know you more. So I'll request that uh, you go towards Pastor Jane. She's seated behind there. Uh, we want to get to know more about you and you getting to know more about us. And also we remember we, we were challenged last week to support needy families. We put a smile on uh, families' faces. For, by them just enjoying Christmas. And so I pray that uh, God will lead you in supporting this uh, cause. So I'll request that all of us rise on our feet. I'm going to read uh, Revelations chapter 1, verse 5b. It says, To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom, priests to his God, to, to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Uh, uh, look at the person standing next to you and let's share in the words of the grace. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen. Have a blessed week.